afternoon, YouTube and YTPC. How are you all doing? I'm doing bloody marvellous today. I'm all dressed up because I went to the bank this morning to sort some stuff out. And uh, decided to wear my Pipe Club of London tie. And if you're not a member of the Pipe Club of London, it's a big mistake because uh, they have associate memberships for everyone all over the world. It's an old established club and they often meet at uh, James Fox in uh, St. James Street in London, which is just around the corner from my club. So that suits me perfectly and it's have a look, I put a link below for the Pipe Club of London. Have a look um, at their website. And th they do uh, Zoom meetings and things like that. If you're in the UK, of course, uh, it's easy, but some people join from other countries, of Canada and the US and people like me in Switzerland. So anybody can join it and um, it's great fun, you know. Anyway. Back to the subject of today, a box arrived. Yes, a box, a yabbo it was. And that box had come all the way from Wales, from my good friend, Smoky Dragon. This is his channel name and his name is Roy. And good old Roy, we've been sort of talking by email about a mystery tobacco and this box arrived today in that box was this pipe and this is a beautifully artisan made Polish pipe but I just love the rustication on it nine millimeter beautifully beautifully made hardly smoked and um, that was included in it. Roy, you're just too generous, really. And uh, I'm overwhelmed and I'm delighted, my dear friend. Thank you. And not only that, he gave me some great tobaccos. And one of them was this uh, Peterson Irish Dew. And I've always wanted to try this and I never got around to buying any. And here it is. And of course, Irish... Uh, Dew has got some of that Bailey's uh, flavour to it, a bit of Irish whiskey, Burley, Virginia, and I love those kind of tobaccos, like Eileen's Dream or something like that. And uh, this is absolutely, I've just started to smoke it, and it's beautiful, and it's smoking perfectly in this lovely pipe. Nine millimeter, got a filter in there. Anyway, let me show you all the things that are in the box here. Well, my dear friends, today a box arrived and these things were in it. Can you believe? I've been talking with my good friend, the Smoky Dragon, uh, otherwise known as Roy in Wales. And um, it all started with, with this interesting tin which he sent me a photo of and says uh, have you ever heard of this tobacco and we exchanged many emails about it and uh, found out something about Louis Dobbleman the manufacturer in Holland um, and this is a, a wine soaked uh, tobacco uh, I think largely Cavendish and Roy told me Years ago, um, he, he smoked it and really liked it. It wasn't particularly well known by his colleagues. Uh, but one time, um, there was a shop that was being cleared out, an old tobacconist, and there was a box with six tins like this one. Still all sealed. Can you believe that? And I found out that that tobacco factory closed in 1962. That must have been the latest possible date 
it could have been manufactured. So this, uh, this tobacco is uh, about 60 years old. It's uh, quite amazing, isn't it, to think. And it says smooth flaked Cavendish, so it's, it sounds absolutely delicious. What I don't know, of course, is, um, you know, how the seal is um, after all these years. You can hear it in there. So we, we did a little deal and um, Roy sent me these things and I'm sending another box back to him um, with great gratitude. And of course, being a generous man, Roy sent me a few other things, didn't he? Look at this. Uh, Peterson Irish Dew, which it just ha happens I had never tried this. And I always thought, oh, I must try that one time. I'm sure it's my cup of tea because I like a bit of, uh, you know, uh, Bailey's and uh, I like Virginia Burley aromatics. And this is what it is. <laughs> Perfect. And very kindly, he sent me a couple of sample tobaccos, which are mystery tobaccos. So... I'm going to try those and see what happens to me. Um, you know, if that's... Uh, I don't think that's marijuana or anything, is it? <laughs> no, I'm sure it's lovely tobacco and I'm going to try those. And I'm going to try them in this beautiful pipe, which, you know, I mean, the generosity of what ATPC. Um, good old Roy has sent me this lovely pipe. I love the rustication on it. It's nine millimeter, just my cup of tea. And it's hardly smoked, Roy. Um, maybe you don't smoke uh, filters, I don't know. But uh, this is a beautiful pipe. And uh, it's actually made by an artisan in, um, in Poland. You can see it there. And uh, it's not Mr. Brock, no, it's uh, Warabil. Warabil, that sounds like someone from uh, Tolkien, but H. Warabil, I think it is, from Poland. And it's handmade and it's very nicely made. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful pipe. Lovely thick walls. And again, just my cup of tea. So I'm going to enjoy that, Roy, really much with these lovely tobaccos. That is so kind of you to send me a pipe on top of everything. So, and uh, last but not least, he sent me this lovely pipe stand. You can always use those if you're walking or traveling. They're very nice and light and easy to pack away. So I, I love those pipe stands as well. Now, here's the thing, YTPC. As many great uh, pipers like um, Good Pat uh, Paladin and others who have received such a sealed tin, and he reminded me of that when I said, oh, have a look at that tobacco inside. He said, y you actually, you're in awe. I'm in awe of this tin and you think, should I leave it for posterity? You know, who am I? It's like opening the tomb of uh, Tutankhamun, you know, who am I to, uh, after 60 years, to, to look upon the, the, the tobacco of more than half a century ago? So, I don't know what I should do. I, it, it's absolutely a beautiful tin and I will put this in either my shed of serenity or the shed of Shangri-La in southern Switzerland as a lovely Tabakiana decoration. Isn't it a lovely, beautiful tin in fantastic condition considering the number of years. Um, so... 
you let me know also, also Roy. Um, one one point I made to Roy is, look, I tell you what, I'll give me a tin. I'll give you something for it, and uh, I'll 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 risk it. I'll open it, and if the tobacco is gone off or mouldy or whatever, it's all right. Uh, you know, I just wanted to see, and if if it would be good, you know, then. Um, I'm really lucky and I can try this fantastic tobacco. It's not a problem if I just have to rehydrate it, but uh, who knows after 60 years, you know. But I've, I've got uh, tin opener's fright at the moment. Dare I open this tin? When it's in, in front of you like that, I understand Paladin when he said that to me. Yeah, you... You know, it's a different thing. You almost think you're violating something that should be in the in the Tobacchiano, the, the National uh, Museum in London, <laughs> or somewhere <laughs> where they have a Tobacchiano wing in that museum uh, for people like us to look at it and and be in awe of it. <laughs> okay, that's made my day today it really has isn't that lovely that you can get in a conversation exchange emails and and talk about things and um this and talk about a wonderful old uh tobacco discovery and i'm still trying to research it further um but we, the, the amazing thing is there was a big factory there in Holland and uh, they moved it to, to Germany for a short time and then finally they uh, um, stopped producing in 1962. And um, the pipe business that they had was sold to Oldencott and uh, then, of course, Oldencott had a history after that. Um, but those tins are in perfect condition, and I'm just wondering about the tobacco inside, you know. It would be lovely if we could uh, just, uh, you know, somehow look inside without opening it, but um, it doesn't work, so... Oh, this is very nice, I must say. Beautiful, smooth. I haven't smoked much, but uh, I don't think it's going to bite me at all. And those sweet flavours are in there. So if you like sweet bombs or, you know, ones that tell you, here's the flavour, you don't have to search for it, this would be one. So what to do with this little fella? Seven ounce tin, immaculate condition. I, I'm still teetering on the brink to peek inside. It could be a favour to Roy because then he would know with the other tins, I think you have five or six other tins. Um, you know, if he would sell them, for example, you could uh, know what the condition of the tobacco is. You know, if it's dry, uh, you could still rehydrate it and smoke it. But after more than 60 years, 60 years. On the top of this tin is a label saying US News 190. And I think Roy said this: these tins may have been shipped first to the United States and and then somehow back to the UK. It was a bit mysterious how they ended up at that tobacconist. Um, so one dollar ninety for seven ounces. You know that must have been a long time ago. Or is it one pound ninety? And just the label was there. I don't know. 
It's a mystery. I haven't actually read the side of the tin where there's some print here. Tokai is a smooth flaked mixture, a blend of fine tobaccos from many countries. It is the only tobacco cured with rich Tokai wine. That's a sweet dessert wine that uh, Hungary is very famous for, which gives it a balanced, sweet, tangy taste that is unique in the world. From Tokai's light honey brown color, you can see its mildness. Its distinguished aroma is a guarantee for your smoking pleasure. Signed, Louis Doblman. Quite extraordinary. It says on the tin that Louis, Louis Doblman was a manufacturer since 1866. Everything I found was post-1900 on the internet when I was looking at the history. And I looked, looked in, you know, uh, Pipeville and... Um, I looked in Pipeville and Pipedia and all of those usual sources. Magnificent tin, isn't it? So, we'll see. Let me know what you think. Should I open it or not? Well, you all take care, everyone. And I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely weekend coming up. Just as wonderful as my day was today. And thank you again, Roy, my dear friend in Wales. Thank you.